The Legend of Zelda. All it takes is those four words to remind me not only of my childhood, but of all the emotions that are so ever-presently attached with that title. It's recently occurred to me that these feelings aren't dependent on a single installment, but are instead linked to the series as a whole. Now, Ocarina of Time, like many of you I'm sure, was my first Zelda game and thus will always be the most dear to me. But i found that as I play each and every installment through the years that I'm revisited by these same feelings, even though I don't have a childhood connection with them. It's almost as if the games have always been a part of my past and I'm just taking a trip down memory lane. The recent awareness of this sensation has got me thinking. No matter how modern the game may be, how is it that the Legend of Zelda franchise is always so nostalgic? Nearly every Zelda game begins with a boy named Link, who's usually sleeping, only to be awakened to fulfill his heroic destiny. Link doesn't show much personality other than his classic unwavering determination and his most notable characteristic, courage. This is mostly in part to him being a mute from the player's perspective, a conscious decision that was made by the developers so that the player can more easily identify with him. In fact, the intention of putting the player in Link's shoes is one of the franchise's most noteworthy characteristics. The journey always begins in Link's home, in which we briefly catch a glimpse of his carefree lifestyle. This is illustrated by the various humble communities that differ with each game. Each location is a haven of sorts that has never seen hardship until it does during the rising action portion of the game, spurring Link into taking up arms as the hero of the story. This catalyst is relatable to most people in modern day life. If you remove the fantasy and the fictional components from the narrative, then you're left with a boy who has been sheltered by family or friends or the amenities of a safe place that he calls home and is more or less thrown into the real world because he's now of age. I mean, how many times do we see this notion paraphrased and thrown around in the Zelda series? In Wind Waker, Link is awoken on his birthday in which his grandma tells him that, in the olden days, this was the day that boys were finally considered to be men. He's finally old enough to wear the hero's clothes and has reached the age that is marked as a milestone for young children. In Ocarina of Time, the Great Deku Tree makes the statement that, it seems the time has come for the boy without a fairy to begin his journey before sending Navi to bring Link to the meadow. Then upon crossing the bridge that leads to Hyrule Field, his childhood friend Saria stops him and says that she's always known that he would leave the forest someday. All of these games are linked by the theme of growing up and leaving home, something that we all go through. We shed our childlike whims for responsibilities and duties of adulthood, much like Link is forced to do on a grander scale. He is to live up to his destiny as hero and leave home to journey across Hyrule. For those of us that have played these games as children, we were being shown what was to come without even realizing it. We too would have to leave behind our naive ideals and the innocence of childhood to embark on quests of our own that shattered the illusion of what we thought the world was and what it actually is. And it's a lot harder than what many of us as kids assumed it would be. This is further demonstrated in the games once evil begins to plague the land of Hyrule, warping once familiar areas into monster-infested nests. Take Twilight Princess for example. After returning the Tears of Light to the Farin province, Link arrives back in Orden only to find everyone locked away in their homes, a heavy burden of fear settled around the once cheerful village. This is also seen in Ocarina of Time after Link has awoken from his seven-year slumber, only to find that Ganondorf has plunged the kingdom into darkness, including Kokiri Forest, which has been overrun with Deku Babas and shrubs. Now, I'm not saying that once we move out of our hometowns that monsters are gonna come in and infest the place, but I always found myself identifying with what is assumed to be Link's distress at the state of what used to be his home. It's the same feeling I got when I became old enough to realize that not everything lasts forever, when I was mature enough to feel my own mortality. I think all of us go through that at some point upon entering adulthood, this jarring understanding that bad things do happen and without reason or purpose. Life isn't fair and nothing ever stays the same. 
Holding on to that childlike innocence and sequential past relationships is another theme that is heavily explored within the series. The main premise of Majora's Mask takes place solely on Link's unyielding hope that he'll find his lost fairy companion, Navi, from Ocarina of Time. Even though she made her peace at the end of the game, he refused to accept the departure. How many of us have had a difficult time accepting a departure of our own? Whether that be a childhood friend that you grew apart from, or even the death of a loved one. This game's overall theme is the acceptance one must undergo to move forward with a devastating realization or loss, as seen in the denial and grief that the people of Termina exhibit. Skyward Sword even makes a stab at this when exploring the close relationship between Link and Zelda, who are childhood friends that have been forced apart during the events of the game. Zelda undergoes a major change that affects who she is, and Link must come to terms with this as she makes life-altering decisions to fulfill her destiny. While Link himself is tried time and again on his values and what he holds most dear, facing the consequences when he can't protect Zelda, Skyward Sword's theme of awakening demonstrates what it's like to come into yourself as a young adult, how your decisions affect others in reaching this goal, and the hurdles you must overcome to begin the journey to fulfilling your own purpose in life. The Legend of Zelda franchise has an uncanny way of mirroring common coming-of-age tribulations that just about all of us go through at some point in our lives. The albatrosses that Link must bear in each installment are surprisingly mutual with the player when stripped down to their core, making ascertaining the relations to us very natural. While these issues are different depending on which installment you consider, all Zelda games have one thing in common, and that's showing us, teaching us how to embrace change, arguably one of the most important lessons any of us can learn in life. These games remind us so much of the past because that's exactly what they are. They show us who we used to be and what we are to become. They are familiar and true. They are safe and warm, just like your happiest memories. They remind you that you're not alone, that you are needed, that you do have a purpose, and that purpose is great. And that, I believe, is the reason why video game franchise has touched so many different kinds of people from so many different walks of life. It speaks to the very basis of who we are and what it means to be human, a different kind of nostalgia that is more than just a fleeting memory. Zelda is coming home.